Today, we're in an exceptional time when there is only one kind of human on the Earth. But even 100,000 years ago, there probably were at least four kinds of humans on the Earth. And three of them, of course, very different from us, and those three died out. Setiap hal yang berkaitan dengan bukti-bukti evolusi manusia itu akan menjadi perhatian dunia. Karena apa? Semua orang di dunia ini juga akan bertanya siapa saya. At least 24 kinds of humans other than us had existed on the Earth. They survived through bitter winters, grim famines, and even predator threats. In the end, all perished except us, Homo sapiens. But why? The island of Flores is located in the center of Indonesia's Lesser Sunda Islands. It means flower in Portuguese. The deeper you go inland, the smaller and more scattered the villages become. Under a typical tropical climate, distinct wet and dry seasons are created. Meet the joint team of researchers from Australia and Indonesia. They are looking for evidence of Homo sapiens migrating to Asia and Australia. This is their destination, hidden inside thick forests. It takes approximately 12 hours on foot to get here from the beach. The place is well preserved, thanks to its far distance and invisibility. Twenty-five meters high, 40 meters wide, it's a colossal limestone cave. Unlike the outside, inside the cave is cooler. It has good ventilation and receives enough sunlight. The cave is a good habitat for humans. The role of researchers is similar to that of detectives at crime scenes. but they handle cases that took place millions of years ago. Here, time is stacked in layers. 
The deeper you go, the older the time. The cave started to gain attention in 1965. A priest had discovered human remains here. In fact, humans have lived here for a long time. In 2003, researchers dug six meters deeper into the ground. Bones of nine individuals were excavated. Among these was a child's skull. Itu hampir utuh. Jadi yang pertama tampak adalah bagian kranium dari skull dari bagian kepala dan itu sangat kecil sekali. Dan juga selanjutnya kita temukan mandibelnya, kemudian tangan dan juga kaki hampir hampir utuh untuk ininya. Tapi memang kondisinya sangat rapuh sekali karena uh, uh, ditemukan pada kedalaman 6 meter. Kita, kita pikir kita menemukan rangka anak-anak. The skull of LB1 was named after the initials of Liang Bua. Baik, ini cetakan dari LB1 yang kita cetak melalui menggunakan 3D printer. Ini rahang bawah, ini tengkorak dan rahang atasnya. Ini pernah kita ketemukan pertama seperti ini, tapi kita bingung. Ini tulang seperti apa? Karena terlalu kecil, mestinya segini, tapi ini kecil sekali. One hundred six centimeters tall, thirty kilograms heavy. She was a twenty five to thirty year old female, a woman from eighteen thousand years ago. The same period when we, Homo sapiens, existed. However, she is too diminutive for Homo sapiens. Who is she? Seven million years ago, humans break away from chimpanzees and evolve into diverse species. They had big eyes and keen curiosity. Some species were familiar with tools and hunted beasts. Some endured aridity. Others had to bear harsh glacial epics. Survival is a cruel command given to all creatures. We do not know exactly who our ancestors are. At least 24 different species competed against one another for survival. Why do they disappear? How did we outsurvive others? The human lineage is like a giant tree catching too much wind. Although our ancestors have the same roots, they made diverging choices. Some adapted meat diets, while others became vegetarians. Some species were tall, others were robust. Within the human category, only one species is left. Us. So, 
Did she belong to our species? Or was she part of another branch? Much more needs to be discovered. At first, she was considered the ancestor of our natives, Homo sapiens. Cheerful, somewhat rough, but with a good sense of humor. However, actual truth was revealed after studying their heights. Kami juga waktu itu mulai membanding-bandingkan kalau erectus di mana di Jawa cukup tinggi gitu, tetapi Lucy habilis juga kecil. Sementara kita belum tahu ini masuk mana atau mungkin spesies baru atau seperti apa kita juga belum tahu. Tetapi yang jelas hmm, manusia yang kita temukan ini meskipun sudah dewasa tapi ukurannya kecil. Short height, petite frames, underdeveloped mandibles, their nickname, Hobbit. More importantly, Hobbits had downsized brains, comparable to chimpanzees. itu sekitar 385 atau bagaimana gitu sekitar itu kemudian diulang pakai sudah dibersihkan terakhir kemarin info yang kita peroleh itu sekitar 417 sisi tetapi kita tidak pernah tahu kalau misalnya volume otaknya kecil apakah dia bodoh atau bagaimana kita tidak pernah tahu The history of human evolution is associated with brain capacity. Humans belt along the track of evolution with a compact computer that updates itself gradually but certainly. Australopithecus, from four million years ago. They had a fist-sized brain, like a newborn baby. It was 450 cc. Homo erectus, from two million years ago. Their brain capacity doubled up to 900 cc. Lastly, about 500,000 years ago, it tripled to nearly 1,250 cc. Somewhere along the steady history of evolution, Hobbit's brain exists. Hobbits had smaller brains than Australopithecus, but they appeared two million years later. Were they Homo sapiens? Or an entirely different species? The real question is this. Could they have survived with Homo sapiens? having chimpanzees' brains.
did smaller brains mean lower intelligence? Professor Saptomo presents a vital piece of evidence. An unrecognizable pile of bones. An animal that lived with hobbits. Ini salah satu temuan penting kita. Ini berupa temuan kepala stegodon yang kita temukan tahun 2008 di sektor 16 pada kedalaman 7 meter. These stegodon remains were found inside the cave. How did it end up here? An elephant-like animal that weighed about 800 to 1,000 kilograms. Hobbits were no match to this creature, even in groups. From time to time, they caught stegodons out of pure luck. Tools came in handy when dicing such an animal. Ya, ini kita perhatikan di sini. Ini mempunyai apa? Sisi yang sangat tajam. Nah, ini kemungkinan dia pakai untuk menguliti binatang atau membuat peralatan dari kayu. Ini sangat sangat tajam. Di sini. Ini sangat tajam sekali. Dan ini dibuat dari seperti ini, dari batuan kerakal. Dia pangkas ini dengan hammer stone. Nah, dia pangkas di sini. Tak, tak, tak. Hobbit's tools were as developed as the stone axes from two million years ago. Homo sapiens utilized similar techniques. The difference is not apparent at first. But techniques of Homo sapiens are more advanced. A technique two million years behind. Short height, downsized brain. Hobbits lived on this island until 10,000 years ago, warding off threats from various predators. Presumably, they were at the bottom of the food chain. Like giant rats on the island. Humans who lived with chimpanzees' brains during the Homo sapiens period. How did they arrive on this island? Betul sekali memang sampai saat ini kita tidak pernah ada bukti yang menunjukkan bahwa Pulau Flores pada masa lalu pernah bergabung dengan pulau-pulau yang lain pada saat air laut turun bahkan sampai sejauh 120 meter. Itu tidak pernah bergabung karena Flores itu dikelilingi oleh laut-laut yang dalam. Surrounding seas add further mystery to Hobbit's existence. Throughout glacial to interglacial epochs, the island was always isolated from the land. How did Hobbits with downsized brains Cross the sea.
Nah kita sudah mencoba dengan suatu eksperimen sederhana dengan membuat rakit perahu terakit dari bambu yang kita sambung-sambung kita mencoba untuk menyeberang dari sape ke komodo itu sekitar kita memerlukan waktu sekitar 11 jam considering their skills it took them unimaginable amounts of time to cross what induced them to be desperate enough to travel Many answers remain shrouded in mystery. These miniature humans used fire as well. After hunting in groups, they cooperated to bring quarry into the cave. Hobbits were never intellectually inferior. Putting aside small brains, one question has not been answered yet. Why were they so petite? That the ecosystem was very different than it is uh, uh, today. There were small, small elephant-like animals called stegodon that would have been the size of cows, essentially. Uh, Komodo dragons were still in this part of uh, Flores at that time. Uh, and there were also two scavenging birds, a uh, giant marabou stork that was up close to uh, 180 centimeters tall, as well as vultures. Komodo dragons, speculated to have coexisted with hobbits, are still alive today. It is much larger than other lizards. In contrast, hobbits are remarkably tiny. Such irony is explicable with Foster's rule. Larger animals evolve to be smaller, while smaller animals become larger. Hobbits lived alongside small elephants, giant storks, and three meters long Komodo dragons. To survive in an isolated island, reducing brain size is advantageous because brains consume a lot of energy. Hence, humans of Flores became smaller and smaller, up to a point where they were one meter tall. Hobbits, who are they? Where do they belong? This is a question that challenges the origins of mankind. Dr. Yosuke Kaifu studies evolution in Asia. He compared the teeth of hobbits with those of other humans. Hobbits had similar canine teeth to Homo habilis and Homo erectus, the earlier humans. But their molars were like Homo sapiens molars. Ironically, hobbits' teeth exhibit both species traits. Subsequently, skulls were compared. 
ホビットはむしろこっちに似てるんですね歯も小さい顔も小さいこういうことですねそれからあと細かいことを言うと頭の形状も違いますホビットの頭の形状はどっちに似てるかというとこっちの方によく似てるわけですね Perhaps this woman was a descendant of Homo erectus who became smaller in Flores Out of Africa has been the human origins theory we believe to be true About 2 million years ago Homo erectus left Africa and spread across Europe and Asia Two hundred thousand years ago, Homo sapiens escaped Africa and began to migrate. We, modern humans, are their descendants. But if hobbits are descendants of Homo erectus, the scenario must be rewritten. Homo erectus, the first migrant from Africa, emigrated to various regions and prospered. Hobbits of Flores is one of those variations. One day, about 10,000 years ago, hobbits vanished. Just like their arrival, their demise is also under secret. Kita ketemu abu vulkanis yang sangat tebal di sana. Bahkan kadang-kadang, ya mungkin karena posisinya yang miring seperti ini, jadi di sini agak tipis, tapi di sini mungkin tebal sekali. We can infer their extinction by examining the strata. The uppermost layer contains fossils of Komodo dragons and Homo sapiens. The bones of stegodons and hobbits are not seen from here on upwards. Between the two layers is a sedimentary layer of volcanic ash. The extinction of hobbits seems to be related to a volcanic eruption. Bisa, mungkin juga jaraknya tidak jauh dari situ atau bagaimana. Tapi yang jelas itu lubisan sangat besar. Dan itu tentunya akan mengganggu ekosistem di sana. Termasuk mungkin manusianya. Karena dari situ kita melihat ada beberapa spesies yang hilang. Termasuk Homo fluisiensis, Stegodon. Ash from the enormous eruption completely covered the island. They must have felt the danger closing in on them. Hobbits tried their best to adapt, even by downsizing their brains. The reason behind their survival was not a large brain, but an adaptive brain. A new name was given to them, Homo floresiensis. It means humans of Flores. When 
the final moment came. Their secrets were buried under Liang Guao six meters deep. Now, we head further back into the past, the beginning of human origins. A place where numerous beasts and humans had competed fiercely for survival before humans had left Africa. Fiona Stewart is a scholar who studies the nesting behavior of chimpanzees in Tanzania. The easiest way to understand chimpanzees' lifestyle in nests is to become a chimpanzee herself. Chimpanzees build nests in trees measuring 3 to 12 meters tall. The tree here is by far taller than 12 meters. She uses her hands and feet to climb high up in the air, regressing from being a bipedal to quadruped. Chimpanzees habitually build nests every day. After dismantling about 290 nests, Fiona figured out how nests are built. Okay. I was warmer when I was in the nest. I had fewer insect bites and, um, and I got marginally more sleep. Ultimately, building a nest allows um, they're a large-bodied animal, so it allows them to lay recumbent in a um, re completely relaxed position for sleep. So it changes the kind of sleep they can have. But that would have allowed the evolution of bigger brains. It would have been a cognitive leap forward. It is safer and more comfortable up in the trees. So why did early humans come down? Even after three million years, since humans had split from chimpanzees, humans lived up in the trees. To casual observers, they are more like chimpanzees than humans. With fear roaming in their eyes, they gaze beyond woodlands, The plains were perilous back then, full of predators. In contrast, up in the trees was much safer, blessed with plenty of food. Had there been no changes, they could have lived here forever. It's 
it's a, a 4.4 million euro hominin. Um, so it's one of the older ones. And um, it was, it's a very, it was a big surprise to the field when it was recovered, especially the skeleton that's nicknamed Artie, um, because she was not what anyone was expecting from a hominin. The skull belonged to an adult female from 4.4 million years ago. Her name was Artipithecus ramidus, Artie for short. Artie was like chimpanzees. This is her foot. It was different from humans' feet. The toes were opposable. She has the most amazing feature that really surprised everyone was the fact that she has uh, she had opposable toes, so her big toes were away from the rest of her toes, um, and they were you, they can it can grab things. Their feet were more suited to live in trees than on land. Still, they came down sometimes. they could clumsily walk on two feet. So, why are they called humans when they are closer to chimpanzees than us? The reason why she's placed within our lineage in the human lineage um, as a hominin, so as one of our fossil relatives, is because of um, her teeth and then her bipedal adaptations. These two things are the, the defining characteristics of being a hominin, of being part of our lineage. One sufficient condition to be a human is walking upright towards a destination. Another piece of evidence is contained in this drawer. These are the teeth of a modern-day chimpanzee. The canine tooth is large. After humans parted from chimpanzees' lineage, the size of human teeth shrunk steadily. Artie, at the time, had smaller teeth compared to other primates. the climate became more and more arid. Now, the fate of the species came into Artie's hands. She could live on both four and two feet. Nevertheless, as woodlands disappeared and competition became fierce, she is forced to stand on two feet. The species that could barely walk on two feet head to treacherous plains. Although their posture wasn't perfect, they now have two free hands. This was the very first step of humanity in their never-ending journey to the dangerous unknown. So, how were the lives of humans outside of woodlands? They were chased by predators and forced to compete against other humans for food. Nonetheless, they survived. 
In 1978, the most critical trace in human history was discovered. 45 kilometers south from Olduvai Gorge. On my right hand side here, the pile of rocks in here is actually covering the hard surface bearing these footprints. These footprints are dated back to 3.6 million years back. And uh, in this side, there are footprints of three uh, hominids walking from south to north. The footprints of the three humans who walked over the moist ash were covered by grass. They belong to Australopithecus afarensis. The toes and heels imprinted in the soil are almost identical to our feet. Two adults were going somewhere, and a child whimsically ran around them. Humans constantly faced obstacles after leaving woodlands. And most recently, a human race who traveled everywhere comes forth. Fiona traveled to Tanzania, all the way from the UK. The aim of her research is not to prove differences between humans and chimpanzees, but rather to show similarities. This allows us to understand humans better. As chimpanzees build their nests for the day, Fiona climbs up to her own. The fate of chimpanzees and trees, and humans who ventured out into the danger, have indeed varied. Early hominins in that era were upright because there was some benefit to that already in the trees so they didn't change from a quadrupedal chimpanzee-like locomotion to walking upright they were already using that in the trees and then adapted it further on the ground <laughs> we are we are a unique package um, just like any species is uh, but um, what makes us human is that package of traits. So it includes bipedality, it includes large brains, complex tool use. Finally, Artie is at the crossroads of her fate. She was probably afraid to leave the past and accept the future. The single choice formed our existence today. <laughs>